This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the end of the petrodollar in World War III. I think when historians look back on 2021, the story that I'm about to talk about will be seen as one of the really early canaries in the coal mine for the next global conflict. To understand what this is, you have to understand what the petrodollar is. The petrodollar is just the U.S. dollar being used to buy oil. So what happened is the the U.S. dollar used to be backed by gold. You could take it to the so-called gold window. You could take some U.S. dollars, and then the U.S. Treasury would give you gold. This ended in 1971 when Richard Nixon closed the gold window and ended the convertibility of U.S. dollars into gold. But the U.S. dollar was still somewhat backed by something, not as something that you could convert it to. But what happened is in the early 70s, there was a deal between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. And crude oil was allowed to appreciate. Its price was allowed to appreciate to make the total market cap of crude oil much larger. And this was this was an idea to back the U.S. dollar. So you couldn't convert your U.S. dollars into crude oil. But if you wanted to buy crude oil, you needed to get your hands on U.S. dollars. If you were any other country besides the U.S., you had to earn those U.S. dollars through trade. If you were the U.S., you had this exorbitant privilege of being able to print up dollars to buy oil. So this was a deal between the Saudis and the U.S. and really explains to a large extent U.S. support for the Saudi regime since then. What did this do? This led to a global demand for U.S. dollars. If you wanted to trade, you needed U.S. dollars. If you wanted to buy crude oil or any other commodities, they all began to be priced in U.S. dollars. And so this created a real implicit uh, and forced demand for U.S. dollars. Global commodity trade is still mostly in U.S. dollars. And one way of seeing this is if you are an oil producer, particularly in North Africa, North Africa or the Middle East, and you try to sell your oil for something other than U.S. dollars, you end up dead. Bitcoin, as we've said, is secured by proof of work. The U.S. dollar is secu- secured by proof of war. And this is a good place to point out, to ask the question, of course, which do you think consume, consumes more energy, proof of work or proof of war. Proof of war definitely consumes a lot more energy and kills a lot more people. So if you're someone like Saddam Hussein, you decide to sell your oil for euros instead of US dollars, you end up dead. If you're someone like Gaddafi, you decide to sell your uh, your your crude oil for euros, or you decide to set up your own uh, pan-African currency that's backed by gold held by the central bank in Libya, you also end up dead. This explains American antipathy to these two dictators. There are a lot of dictators in the world, but when you look at the dictators that we go after, it's usually related to the U.S. dollar and crude oil. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button and share this video with a few friends. So now we have the whole Afghanistan mess. It was a mess getting in under George W. Bush. It was a huge mistake. It was a mess while we were there, a huge loss of innocent life, trillions of dollars wasted, and the exit was botched, obviously, as well. So the problem here is if you're an outsider and you're looking at the U.S., you might be, you might get the impression that the petrodollar is no longer backed by proof of war, backed by proof of, uh, of violence, or backed by the threat of violence. And it's hard to say who is exactly to blame. I think it's a mixture of bad political leadership, the last four presidents in particular, including Biden, of course, and also bad military leadership. We have generals, U.S. generals now, who are much more worried about white rage. Uh, They're reading Mao and Lenin, and they're busy virtue, virtue signaling rather than actually trying to win wars. Someone like General Mark Milley should be in jail or should be fired for his incompetence and his his focus on really the wrong things. The whole point of having a U.S. military is to actually uh, actually defend the country. And also, if you're stupid enough to engage in foreign wars, to not completely botch it and look like a fool, especially when your currency is backed by proof of war. So now we come to this guy. We come to our uh, our uh, Chinese Communist Party friends in China, and. China wants to be able to do the same thing that the U.S. has been doing, been doing since 1971. It's really fun to be able to print up your own money 
and buy crude oil with it. This is what de Gaulle called the exorbitant privilege uh, that the U.S. had back when it was um, the gold standard was unraveling. So China wants to be able to print uh, their own money, UN, and use it to buy crude oil. And they've started to do this. And this, of course, explains, you may wonder why the U.S. has this big problem with Iran. And it doesn't matter whether we have a Democrat or Republican president. They're always saying bad things about Iran. It may have something to do with the fact that Iran has been selling oil to China uh, for UN. Uh, we see multiple stories. This is from, it was the first story there was from 2012. This is from 2018. And China is really for the last, uh, call it eight or 10 years, has been moving towards trying to buy as much oil as it can using UN. This is also happening with uh, Russian companies like Rosneft, which is one of the world's largest oil producers. They've started selling their uh, their oil for euros. So what this is, these are major cracks forming in the petrodollar system. If you have countries using other currencies to conduct trade or to buy commodities like crude oil, this creates a lot less dollar demand. And this is not good for the current US dollar system. And ironically, a lot of this has been caused by, by US foreign policy. If when you do sanctions against Russia, and you freeze their bank accounts, this really encourages them to move to other currencies like the euro or the UN. And so the US is, is really largely to blame for this as well. But the really big story this hap that happened this last week and that I wanna draw your attention to is this military cooperation agreement that was just signed between the Saudis and Russia. While everyone was focused on the Afghanistan news, this managed to slip through the cracks. They've signed, uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia have signed a military cooperation agreement at an arms expo outside of Moscow. Obviously, the U.S. has been the major supplier of, of military weapons and arms to the Saudis, and now that is really switching over to Russia. Uh, this agreement was signed by the two uh, defense ministers and is, quote unquote, aimed at developing joint military cooperation between the two countries. Now, I think this needs to be seen. I think this is a very, very significant story and needs to be seen in the context of the whole petrodollar system and uh, this, this history of using U.S. dollars to buy crude oil. If we look at who the Saudis uh, ship to, they mostly ship now to uh, Japan and China. So China actually buys more crude oil than the U.S. does uh, from the Saudis. Uh, Japan as well. Obviously, Japan doesn't really have their own uh, domestic oil sources. So China has become a much more important customer than the U.S. to the Saudis. And this makes this makes a lot of sense in the sense that so much manufacturing is, has left the U.S. and is being done in China. So they would have huge energy, um, energy demand. Also, the U.S. can produce a lot more of its own crude oil than China can. So if you follow the money and you see how important China has become to the Saudis, uh, this is the writing on the wall. And here, this is my theory, this is speculation, but I, I believe it's true, and I believe subsequent history is going to show that it's true. The Saudis are getting ready to sell a lot more oil for euros and UN. This is going to anger the U.S., so the Saudis need to make sure that they have Russian military protection before they start doing it. I think this is what's behind this military uh, cooperation agreement. Now, this is a huge violation of what's called the Carter Doctrine, which has been this implicit policy since Jimmy Carter in January of 1980, when he made it very clear that if the Soviets tried to move into the Persian Gulf, there would be immediate uh, retribution from the U.S. military. And the Carter Doctrine has held pretty secure for a while. It's been breaking down in the last few years in Ru Russia support in Syria, obviously, um, but this has been the policy, and now the cracks are forming, and the Russia is getting much more involved in the Middle East, especially through this arms agreement with the Saudis. Now, will the U.S. do anything? If we take a look at what's happened, what happened in Iraq and what happened in Af Afghanistan, do we think the U.S. or do I think the U.S. will do anything if the Saudis really drastically cut back on using the U.S. dollar for their sales? No, I don't, I don't think we will. I don't think we have the guts or the leadership to do it. 
Will the U.S. do anything if China invades Taiwan, which in my opinion is almost certain in the next five years? Uh, I don't think the U.S. can do anything or will do anything. And I think Afghanistan and, and the debacle that happened there, combined with the last uh, really 20 years of military failed military inventions, interventions, such as in uh, uh, Iraq as well, this really shows not just the cracks in the American empire, but the cracks in the global U.S. dollar financial system. And I think if we get a World War III, it would look something, we can see sort of the sides are forming. It'd be China and Russia versus the U.S. And this would be a very powerful combination. Russia has the oil and China has the manufacturing and military know-how. I'm not saying this is going to happen next year, but we can see the pieces falling into place. And I think historians will look back on this Saudi-Russia alliance as a canary in the coal mine. It's very important to remember we've had really 50 years of peace, but this is all coming to an end. The financial system is barely being held together by the central banks. We have, uh, we're, we're in the fourth turning, which is the, uh, the, the final stage of the cycle. You have these four 20-year cycles, which are roughly generations. We're in the fourth turning, which is when you get revolution, war, uh, global violence, and also breaking down of the financial system. We're also at the end of a long-term debt cycle. This sort of is overlapping with the fourth turning. It's been a very, uh, very calm, very peaceful 50 years, as I've said, and it's very easy to be lulled into a sense of security by this. But I believe that the 2020s, as we've seen since 2020, are going to be a very tumultuous decade, and they're going to be very different from what's come before. And I think there is a chance, there's a chance of global war, certainly cyber war and biological warfare, as we may already be seeing. And uh, as the U.S. financial system breaks down, and as American hegemony uh, breaks down, we're going to see uh, a new system emerge. It's going to be it's going to be violent. There's going to be revolution. There's probably going to be war as well. And this is one reason it's very important to start thinking about currency. Start thinking about where you're going to store your wealth. And my money is on Bitcoin, as you all know. And if you're not if you're not following the news, if you're not watching this uh, the these this evolution of a new uh, power structure and a new financial system forming, you're really going to miss out and uh, your wealth will be exposed. Uh, you've got to be very careful where you place it. Are you going to hold it in dollars? Are you going to hold it in euros? Are you going to hold it in something um, something that can't be censored, that's more permissionless, that's easy to move around in time of war, something like Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.